Welcome back to WD Magic Cast for the week of April 7th, 2024. This is episode 253. WD Magic Cast, the show about the Mars, the Marvels, the Galaxy, and beyond. I'm your host, Matthew Graken. In this week's show, my wife and I, Kim, sit down and talk about Disney and Epic Universe and kind of how the, uh, what's going on there um and, and kind of what should disney do and and uh well you'll see you'll see don't forget to join us on the social media where you, know, you can find us just about everywhere at wd magic cast on x twitter facebook threads uh instagram you name it we're out there youtube make sure to join our youtube channel where you can also hear the show over there and tiktok we're on there as well don't forget also to check out our T Public shop where we can where you can get yourself some really cool WD Magic Cast swag, gear, coffee mugs, uh, tote bags for the summer, T-shirts, you name it. There's a whole bunch of different really cool things out there, and you help out your favorite podcast while you're at it. And on that bombshell, on with the show. Nineteen seventy one, Disney opens the Magic Kingdom in Orlando, Florida. Sleepy Orlando, Florida. Not much going on there at the time. And for over a decade, they were the uh, kings in town. They that was just them. And then they opened Epcot, and it was still just them. And then in the late eighties, while they were contemplating and working on Disney. MGM Studios at the time, and eventually become Disney Hollywood Studios, a neighbor moved into town. And that neighbor was Universal. Universal Studios, who had a property in California that Disney was used to dealing with, and uh, Universal City, as it was, or is. And now in Florida, they were building Universal Studios Florida. So they have been cross town rivals ever since, and I've never been there. So to truly talk about Universal or Epic Universe, Universal's Epic Universal, um, I need to bring on someone who has been there to kind of explain the general uh, general idea of the 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 Shadowlands, as I like to call it, the you know. You know, everywhere you see you touches the light is good, but don't go over there. That's that's you know that shadowy area. That's that's the place we don't talk about. So I'm bringing on Kim, my wife, to explain universe, uh, Universal, and uh, she's been studying up on Epic Universe and uh, is looking to drag me there. And uh, I think we should discuss what this new park. Um, has to offer and also what it means for Disney. Kim, hi, thank you for coming on. You're welcome. I don't know if I necessarily say I would be dragging you there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, it's more like uh, it, it's time to go check it out. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I guess in the, you know, to research uh, the competition is always a good thing. Well, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, but the thing is, too, is that, I mean, I, now, all right, I know you said I've been there before, but I haven't been there now in 26 years. So that, that's still a lot sooner than I've been. <laughs> so there was no Islands of Adventure when I was there 26 years ago. So it was just plain Universal Studios. Um, so, you know, when you're looking at all, an, an overall of, Universal Studios against what Disney is, there's no comparison, right? You, you know, you got one little park to a behemoth at what's called Walt Disney World. You know, it, it would take you half a day to get through it, even if you wanted to go, whatever. But the other thing is, too, what Universal didn't have that what Disney have is what Disney has is ambiance. 
you know, you mm-hmm. walk down the you walk down Main Street and you can smell the bakery, you smell the popcorn, you've got a, ca- a giant castle staring at you. Um, that's breathtaking. You know, you've got all this stuff that is just visually eye appealing to you. Um, so it's Disney's more than just rides, right? It's more than just going on a ride or um, you know, just hopping from attraction to attraction. It's about experiences and and um, now it's really become more about food, uh, what food Disney's offering and the snacks that they have and you know, with you know, especially with Epcot having uh, food and wine and all the different festivals that they offer throughout the year. So you know, Disney has just turned it into something different where, Universal is more of your old school cardboard boxed attractions. I don't know how else to call them, but they're just warehouses filled with attraction inside. There's really nothing eye appealing about it. There's nothing that's going to say, wow. (laughs) Um, You walk down the street, there's just nothing there. I mean, you know, I know times have changed and I haven't been there in a long time and, and I have seen videos and I do see that they have changed that a little bit, which is nice to see that they have changed that 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 look a little bit better because 26 years ago, it wasn't like that. It literally was one box after another, um, you know, and now, you know, I think kind of they kind of got it when they did when they started to do Islands of Adventure where they started to get theming and, and, and all that kind of stuff kind of a little bit better. Um, but now, now with Epic Universe, they, I, I don't know who's helping them that came from Disney, but now it's a whole different ball game. Well, believe it or not, even whenever they started the Harry Potter stuff, they actually got a, a few people from Disney over there to, to help out with that. Well, they had to because they had to come up with something that was so immersed that, you know, how, you know, how are you going to get it right? Um, I mean, obviously, the areas that they have built so far from Harry Potter, I mean, I've never, I have not heard anybody say a bad thing about it. Um, You know, from what I've seen visually on, on TV and, you know, and everything. things that I'm looking forward to to going and seeing is a lot of time in the Harry Potter world and you know getting a wand and doing some of the interactive stuff that that they have there which you know is Disney-esque if you want to say because I mean now you know Disney with you know Star Wars land in the studios you can kind of do those interactive things too now um but you know, some of those things too are, you know, it's hard to plan a trip and and do that interactive stuff because you don't really have the time, right? Like you want to get on the rides. You want to see all the experiences to spend the time to do those interactive things takes away the time that you could be spending on the rides. So in a way, it's like a brilliant way to either keep you there longer or it gets you to come back more and more like, well, Hey, I did the ride. You know what? I did the ride the last time I was here. So now I can come back and, and do the interactive part. So well, true. And then there's the people who aren't as big into the rides and don't want to do uh, the more extreme rides, especially um, from my understanding, a lot of the stuff at universal is a little more, a little more intense than what you'd find at Disney. Mm. So it's, it's oh, not yeah. I mean, most of them have, as, most of them have pretty, pretty big height requirements. So, you know, they're not, I mean, I'm not saying that there isn't family rides, but there's a lot more adult rides. I mean, like, you know, I mean, here's our seven and nine year old that we haven't really, we haven't gone there any sooner because really we would have taken them there and and they wouldn't have been able to go on anything. So, you know, if you have a young, young family, it's not really somewhere you're going to go yet. You're gonna have to wait until they're older. So that's right. where dis that's so that's where Disney wins. Um, you know, that if you're putting it like a bucket, like you know, like a, a pros and cons to what you 
go to Disney. If you've got children that are in their teenage levels, they're going to want to go to Universal because they're going to want to do Velocicoaster and they're going to want to go do those big, big known rides. So, you know, it's, it, it, you have to kind of weigh it out to see what, you know, what fits your family and what they want to do. But as far as, you know, I know we've, 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 we've been watching a lot of things about the building of Epic Universe and what that's all going to entail. Um, you know, I, I, I still have a little hard time understanding how this is, how they're going to pull this off with it being not necessarily next to the, to the current two parks, um, especially with the way that they have you know, uh, Islands of Adventure and Universal set up, whereas like you've got Hogwarts, you know, the train that goes between the two. Now you have this third park, but with Harry Potter in the third park, it's kind of weird. But it well, part of that is when Disney came in, they bought up a whole bunch of land <clears throat> that's all together. Universal coming in, you know, two decades later, essentially, and um, didn't have that opportunity. So they bought up a small chunk of land. They pretty much filled that land as much as they could. And then they started acquiring other land wherever it came available. Unfortunately, that land wasn't always near uh, to their current property or connected to their, their current property. So that just makes things a little more complicated for them uh, in, in that aspect. Um, the one benefit to this park is that it's near the Orlando Convention Center. So they're looking to pull a draw from there whenever you have either a Comic-Con like uh, when Megacon is there or some of these other uh, expos that are going on inside the convention center or something happening at the convention center. Oh, look, Island, uh, Epic Universe is right across the street. Let's go there. Let's stay at the Helios because it's nearby and you get the park. Well, not only that, the Helios is is part of the park now. Um, it's the major, you know, it, it is the hotel within the in the park. <laughs> Well, right, and that's that's part of the the whole idea. It's kind of that um that big sale that you know you're look, you don't even have to walk anywhere. You go downstairs out the lobby, and you're you know you're, you're in there. the park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right in the park. Um, yeah, I mean, from what I what I've seen as far as pictures and stuff, it looks like the fountain and everything is right there. So, um, you know, right I mean, because the the Helios itself is designed as the um. Uh, projection mapping backdrop. Correct for the fireworks show. Yeah. So I mean, like I said, I do I do think it's interesting um, that they have what the four like the celestial park in the middle, which is kind of where you'd walk in if you were staying the Helios at the Helios. You'd walk into the celestial park area, which is what they're calling like the main hub. Um, there will be, I think, a ride there too. So, I mean, it will. They will have some type of um, rides and stuff there as well. But that is going to be like their main hub, and then from there, you've got four different. What are they calling them? Uh, ports. Um, portals. Portals. Some sort of, you know, something like that. Yeah. I think I want to say that they're calling them portals. So four portals of how to train your dragon. Obviously, uh, Mario World. Uh, yeah, know, yes, Super Nintendo World. Super Nintendo World. Dark Universe. Dark Universe. Wizarding and then, World of Harry And then the world, Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And so, yeah, uh, how to train your dragon. Correct. So it's going to be interesting with the four different lands. Um, you know, obviously, capacity is going to be an issue at first, <laughs> you know, um, and how, how actually, I mean, I know you could see, you know, building and stuff, and it does look like it's going to be big, but it doesn't look like it's massive. So that's only concerning about of, of how many people can you fit in one portal before you've maxed out that world. And the problem is, is, you know, you, you, you plan to go to Epic Universe for the day and do you actually get to go and 
do anything because if it's so busy, do you even get past one portal or two portals? Um, because of the long, you know, long wait that you are potentially going to have to get into these uh, attractions. So, I mean, obviously that's going to be the case out out the door no matter what. But well, I'm seeing here, this is kind of what I'm having trouble figuring out on a logistic area. So, and not that I should be doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Comparing the layout to just about any of the of the Disney Disney parks. So, you can essentially walk a giant circle around any Disney park and be able to get through from one segment to another. So, for instance, Magic Kingdom. That you can start off, you head over to Adventureland, and you, you don't have to head back towards the castle to get to Frontierland, to head back to the castle to get to uh, Fantasyland, and same thing, back to the castle to go to Tomorrowland. You can essentially walk on the outside perimeter and walk around the entire park as well. You cannot, from everything I am seeing at this place, do that. No, it looks like the only way of in and out is through those portals. Right, which... From a safety standpoint, I think that's really a dumb idea. But that's just me. Um, Yeah, so you can... So when you get in, you walk in through the the entrance into the uh, central hub, the celestial universe... And there's a bunch of things going on in there. You have restaurants, you have other attractions, you have the roller coaster, um, pushing your way back. You got the the fountain, um, Central Hub Lake area with the, the Helios Resort. And then spurring off kind of looks like a... Ooh. An ant with four legs. <laughs> well, essentially, that's really, yeah. You know, it's because you have the park entrance at the front. You have the hotel at the, the back end. And then you got two arms on one side, two arms the other side. Okay, or, or okay, I'll, I'll be nice. Say like a dog. Um, and it's, so you, you take the, the first, you know, come in the entrance, the first spur immediately to your, to your right is how to train your dragon. You have that one entrance way through there. And then you have all the stuff going on in there. But then you have to go back out the same entrance way. Or entrance point looks like. From everything I'm seeing. I, I, I mean, yes, they are large entrance ways. But it's only the one spot. So like if I wanted to go from How to Train Your Dragon to Wizarding World. You literally have to go from wherever you are and how to train your dragon back out that entrance, swing your way up, keeping to the right of everything in the center, to go in the Wizarding World central um, entrance way, and then do everything there. And then from there, go back out, huck all the way across, and you can get to um, the uh, Dark Universe. And do the stuff there and then have to, again, go back out the main entrance again of that section. Walk down till you get to Super Nintendo World. So it's not... In my mind, the flow is not conducive of being able to efficiently make your way around the park and do each of these areas. But, I mean, I could obviously be wrong about that. I mean, obviously, you know, you're just looking at drawings, so you don't know, you know, internally until we get there, do we, or until, like, it opens to know if there is a way to get from you know, a different way to get there from for to, to not use that portal as an exit or entrance. But yeah, that was, that's the only thing that kind of like has got me a little bit like, Hmm, 
because you're going to then put in all these people in these portal hubs that's going to cause lots of congestion and you know because what's going to happen is people are going to get to that portal and they're going to stop because they're going to go well, where to next where do we go next what are we going to do are we going to go get something to eat are we going to go do this are we going to do that and then you're going to cause that portal area to have major congestion because it's just no one's going to like know what where to go to next and that's just going to be the stopping point so, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just don't know how this is going to flow. Right. But this is, this is just the issue that I've, you know, that I've always had with universal is just the layout, the poor layout that they, they come up with. I'm not saying that they don't come up with great attractions because obviously, you know, I do know from people who have gone there and everything that they've said that some of the attractions are like brilliantly phenomenal. So I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying that it's just, if you're, it depends on what you're, it, it really just depends on the type of vacation you're looking for. You know, if you're just looking to go and bang out rides and you don't care about aesthetics and you don't care about, you know, like what you're looking at and it's just bang, 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 then Universal's for you. But if you want to go and have, you know, just those special moments, then it's Disney because it's just Disney does it right every time. You know, the only problem that you're going to right now, what's going to happen is that Disney's not, in, the, there's no competition right now. You know, if, if, if people said to me right now, well, where are you going to go? I mean, it's going to, ha- everybody's going to say, I'm going to go to Universal because Disney just doesn't have anything new to offer. You know, I mean, I'm sorry, but a reimagined Tiana's from Splash Mountain and, and, a, and a water feature for Moana is not going to make me go to Disney. No, well, I mean, they, they've, pretty much announced that the you have these other projects that they uh the blue sky projects for animal kingdom and the magic kingdom are a go yeah but uh, the problem is, is how long do they take to build well you it's know. disney so they should be done in about 10 years yeah right and that's the problem by then you've you've lost a bigger clientele of these children that are growing up with now with Epic Universe are going to continue to keep going there because they're not going to end up going to Disney because, you know, what is there, what is there to, for them to see? And Mm. that's, that's the problem is like, you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta stay in tune and you gotta stay up to date, like up to date. I mean, I understand that, you know, Disney had to know that this Epic Universe was coming. They had to. I, I mean, I know someone is saying, I, I don't know, I saw I saw an article the other day saying, no, they didn't really know until it was kind of broadcasted. Well, I, I'm calling their bluff because I'm sure that they knew. And when you know something this big is being built right down the street from you, you got to do something about it. Uh, you know, and, and, and like I said, I, I understand that they're going through a lot of change, you know, with Iger coming, having to come back in and, and, you know, and all this kind of stuff, but you got to keep yourself relevant. And the problem is, is that this Epic Universe, whether it's good, bad or not, it's going to attract people, whether people are there for Mario, whether they're there for the dark world, whether they're there for to see more Harry Potter, or, you know, you're there because your kids love Toothless. It doesn't matter. The fact is, is that you've now got this gigantic park with all these new rides that people are going to want to experience. And not only that, you're going to have your regular people that live in Florida that constantly go to these theme parks. That's where they're going to go. And they can go there multiple, multiple, multiple times until they can hit every single ride. Disney doesn't have anything to offer that right now. And even if they did, it's going to take years and stuff to concept and build. And by then, how many people have you lost to Universal because they have this now, this epic universe, and already have plans to build more portals and and expand the lands that they have already from these four. So if they've already got plans to build on this, on this, on what's currently being built now, ready for next year, Disney doesn't even have anything even concepted yet. Like, I mean, they have, okay, we may do this and we may do this and we're going to give you a billion dollars to do it, but there's nothing locked in stone. And again, how long is it going to take? You know, I keep hearing, I keep hearing stories about, oh, is there going to be a fifth park? Is there going to be a fifth park? You don't need a fifth park. You just, you need to build more attractions. 
and and that's kind of their plan. What they they are looking to do. I mean, they've got a uh, dead I mean, park. They've. I mean, to me, I, I you know my feelings about Animal Kingdom. Yeah, I, you're I, not in the. I, I I'm not I'm not one to jump on that bandwagon. It is a dead park. There's no purpose of going to that park. <laughs> at, Speak at this, for yourself. <laughs> there right now, there is no purpose of going to that park. It is a Speak half a yourself. day. It is a half a day park. You go there early in the morning. You 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 get online. You go do blue people ride. And you go do the safari. You grab something for lunch. And maybe you go do dinosaur and Everest and you get out of there. And that's it. It's done. Your 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 day. River Rapids, there's, yeah. There's safari, who, wants to, there's... who wants to get their underwear all wet? You know, it's still it's <laughs> Yeah, but who wants to walk around a theme park all day with your underwear wet? Seriously, I don't. And uh, you I think know there's two little boys that run around in this house that will tell you otherwise. <laughs> well, they're seven and nine. <laughs> they don't care. Um, but, you know, I just, it, there's, it's a dead park. You have, and supposedly that's the one with this acres and acres of land. Well, then do something with it. Well, they, they, they are. Yeah, but it should have already, to me, it should have already been done. It should have already been put into place. Like, they should have been equal footing with with Universal right now. Like, they should have been equally building alongside hey you're going to open up epic or we're going to do this and they've well, got nothing. but see and in, in here is this this is kind of the mindset and because in my point in case is one for disney open animal kingdom universal did the same thing it's okay we'll open up something you're opening something big we're going to open up something small two reasons one we're being a good neighbor in that aspect and we don't want to you know draw Drops a lot, a lot of money to create competition, and both of us fail with doing that. So you're going to open a big park, we'll open a small attraction. We open a big park, you open a small attraction. And that's kind of, that is, has been what's been going back and forth. The other thing to that is you wait to see, okay, they are building something. This is what they're saying is going into it. Let's see how this goes. The stuff that they put into it, do people like it? Is this, does it even work right? And if it doesn't, we're not going to do the same thing and make the same mistake. If it does work, okay, we know what we kind of need to do next. And you go back and forth on that. So, all right, they're building this epic universe. They're doing all these wild and crazy things with it. In the, its layout and what attractions they're putting in it, um, all the the other things. Let's sit back and wait a moment. One, they're just going to naturally draw everyone over there. So we'll we will open a couple of things for our guests and get them going. But whenever you know Universal gets their you know two years out of this, whatever it is. Here's what we're going to do next. We're going to start working on something. And if we get, you know, word of, oh, they use this new piece of technology and it's working really well. Okay. How do we come up with our variation of it? Oh, they did this with an attraction and it's, it bombed. Okay. We are not going to do that with our attractions. Um, case in point, Disney had the rights for the Kukler arm that they use in Harry Potter and Spider-Man and stuff like that. They opted out of using that in their attractions um, or just they couldn't use it, whatever. They they never used it. Um, Universal jumped on it. They use it in a bunch of their attractions. Disney uses the Omni Movers and now came up with the Omni Coaster um, to be able to use in a bunch of their stuff. So they have all these other variations that Universal doesn't have in uh, ride technology um, like the dinosaur uh, vehicle um, which is similar to some of the uh, what is it Twilight Zone um, where you have the uh, ability to make if things are moving when they're not so you have all these different th- technologies and stuff okay here's what's working here's what's not working and how do we how do we spin it um, so 
they announced the retheming of Dinosaur, basically. Uh, Indiana Jones is going to be going forward. The Encanto is going forward. Two popular IPs, one's old, one's new. The Encanto, um, five years ago, they didn't have that. So that wasn't something they could have jumped on. But the movie came out a couple years ago. It's proved to be extremely popular. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, we can jump on this, and it kind of fits the mold of Animal Kingdom. Because remember, originally, they were going to do something completely <laughs> different over there. Because uh, they were they were going to do, like, I think, a Moana or something in Animal Kingdom. And it, it didn't feel as right. They were doing Zootopia and Moana. Um, Zootopia, Zootopia could still possibly could work. could still probably work, but I don't right. think Moana would. No. But now they have Encanto, and that's going to work even better because you've got the whole South American area, which they don't really touch on at all. And they have Imagineers now, as we speak, in the South America and Mexico area to gather information and come up with ideas to put into uh, into this retheming of Dialand USA to the to the new section. And then in the Magic Kingdom, they already filed permits for uh water work uh <coughs> type of stuff in the um the behind uh frontier land or behind big thunder mountain project that uh um just tomorrow announced last year he dropped the idea of oh here's an here's something that we are thinking about where we got a lot of space back here and we could do a lot of things so that's that's something else that they are are going to be pretty much going forward with. Even though they haven't officially said it, they're already filing paperwork to be able to start doing work for these things. So, um, so they they are like you said, they, they need to not necessarily work on a new park, but new attractions. That's already starting to be shown that that's in in the process and in the works. Um. As far as a whole nother park, could they do it? Sure. I don't think that's their focus right now. I don't think it's necessary at the moment. N- no, not really. And I, I don't think they have enough going on to be able to pull off a whole new park. Uh, between the resources, between uh, what kind of IP would you do for that? Um the the four park idea is is quite sustainable right now still you just make the parks that you have a little bigger and fresher right i mean you know i mean we all i mean people who have gone you know at least to the studios know that that you know what they've done there you know they hit it out of the ballpark i mean that's without a doubt you know the best park to be in right now you know, uh, you, you know, I mean, Return of the Jedi is, well, R- Rise of Resistance is by far the best ride probably in any theme park right now, bar none. And that's not just us saying that. <laughs> you know, that, I mean, I, you know, I just, I, I mean, I remember my feelings when I walked off that ride, be like, like, speechless. <laughs> You well, know, we, just, we went on it with someone that wasn't even a Star Wars person, and and they and so thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. So you know that it's just, it's it's just, you you can't touch that ride in any way, shape, or form. But, um, you know, but it's and 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 really, most of all, most of all of them. I mean, now, I mean, even I hate to say this, even the Mickey and Minnie ride, even though it took away my favorite attraction, but. <laughs> you know, even that is genius. You know that that Mickey Mini ride, and for Mickey and Minnie to finally have their own ride, I wish they didn't use Great Movie Ride to do that on. Uh, <laughs> but um, but I mean, the ride itself is phenomenal. Um, you know, uh, Slinky Dog was so much fun, so much fun. Um, you know, and I mean, and even like the little alien saucer world that's right next to Slinky Dog was fun. You know, like they're really, and then of course, you know, let's add in like you know, Toy Story Mania and and all that kind of stuff. I mean, they know that they're small, older rides now at this point because they're not new, but they're still good. They still have that replay value because, 
you know, you're, 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 you know, you're playing a game with, you know, you're riding a ride within a, you know, within a game, right? Like, so that you can get a different score every time, you know, you can, you can ride it three, four times and try to beat your score. So there's that definite ride, rewrite ability with it all the time, you know? Right. You know? And well, dinosaur is just going to be a reskin, uh, kind of like, uh, Tiana's adventure that you're going to take an existing ride Pull out everything that's in it and relay it down and lay down new new animatronics and new effects and stuff like that. Um, so that will be in in relative terms a quick turnover. Yeah, you great. So, so still a ride that'll break my back every time I get on it. Can't wait. Yeah, uh, maybe. Um, <laughs> you know, they they reprogram the vehicle, so you know who know what who knows what that's going to entail completely. Um, what's going to come to Encanto? Are they keeping Again, some of the the attractions that over in Chester and Hester already that even though they closed down a bunch of them, you know, dinosaur twirl, uh, not the, uh, the spinning triceratops, uh, triceratops top spin. Mm. Are they going to keep that and just retheme it to something involving Encanto? Um, that's a possibility. Do you put in a new attraction there? You have the space. You can. Um, so. Th- there's still quite a bit that they can do there as far as new. I um, mean, not just completely and do a new layover and bing bang, you're done. Um, so that there's, there's still, there's room for growth there. And that, that would probably be the easiest and quickest because most of that stuff has been developed. It's just tearing down and rebuilding. Um, not that it's going to be easy, but it's, the easier one versus the beyond um, Big Thunder Mountain Blue Sky Project, where you have to terraform the land, redo, uh, lay stuff, everything down, lay new stuff down, and completely rebuild, um, or just build from the ground up, uh, build all the infrastructure, build all the the pipes, the wires, the this, the that, everything, lay the groundwork, lay the concrete, um, just flatten the land and fill and make sure that everything has got a firm footing because there's still swamp land there. So there's a lot more work and that's going to be a, a long, much longer term project than what they're going to do over at animal kingdom. So animal kingdom is going to be your, your quicker response. And then the, the payoff, the, the really big response will be what they do in magic kingdom, expanding that park, making it even bigger than it already is. Well, my vote is for Rapunzel for there. They really need to have a Rapunzel ride, besides just a bathroom. A lot of people feel that way. Um, I don't know what kind of ride you would put for Rapunzel, but I I don't put it past them to to come up with something. I mean, besides a classic dark ride, uh, like you have for Little Mermaid, you used to have for Snow White. Um, you, you no, know, there's, I mean, there's, there's plenty there's, of things there's, you could do. there's plenty of things you could do I mean even if it's like a little boat ride and you you know kind of start off as going off as you know like you see the story entangled but the the story unfold in front of you but um uh but the one part like you, you the, like the massive part of it is like you're in the water and you see all the lanterns go up that would be pretty cool um I don't know how they would project that or do something like that, but you know, something like that. And then, you know, and then in the end, it's not too hard. And then, you know, and then finish up the story with the happily every after. And the exit point would be to like, go to the pub. (laughs) Rapunzel. (laughs) Snuzzly Duckton. Yeah. Yeah. Like you finish it up and like, you know, in the, literally in the pub, (laughs) you know? So, I mean, that would be uh, really cool to see. But we'll see. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, going back to Universal, as far as what they're putting into Epic Universe, um, you got some new stuff, you got some old stuff, and you got some of the same. I mean, it's it's more Harry Potter. I mean, they pay enough for it. So in, in all fairness, it brings them enough money. Uh, Mario, they've tested out in two other parks right now, and mm-hmm. it, it's, it's doing very successful, well. right? And this is even more of a larger version of what they've done uh, in those in 
Tokyo and California. Um, well, I think they took, right? Didn't they take like both parks, right? Because I think like Donkey Kong isn't in California, but it is no. in Japan, or no. is it the other way around? Neither. Oh, it isn't in either? Okay. It I thought isn't. one of them had it. Um, it is coming to California, I think. It's coming to one of them. Um, but they they did the small little section. So at, at, at them, the only one, everything there is just Mario. So it is uh, Mario Kart, Yoshi's Adventure, um, and, and that's it. Um, where Florida is getting Mario Kart, Yoshi's uh, little adventure thing, and Donkey Kong. But I don't think Donkey Kong is going to be opening day. I thought I heard somewhere that that's going to open up shortly afterwards um, to kind of like, okay, we just need a little boost and here you go. So sometimes, because even like in Epcot, when they open Epcot, um, Train to Imagination is not an opening day pavilion. That came, that opened a month or two later. So the, um, you focus on the other areas and then that one's a little further back. You can... Uh, finish that one up um, later on. I, I could be wrong. That may it may o- open opening day with everything else, but some you don't always do that. Um, you focus on some of your your bigger things, and then uh, you save some other things for a little bit later that you can tweak and work on, um, and then open that up a- as time goes on. Yeah, I mean, you know, give something to have later for make me, you know, make your locals go back for. <laughs> right. Well, right. Really. That's what, yeah, a lot of that comes down to it. Um, and then you have the Universal Monsters that is going to be the classic monsters, but isn't going to be the classic monsters. And I don't know how, yeah, what they're doing with that. Um, could be interesting. We'll see. You know, there's an expansion pad off of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that they're they're looking to do things with, um, and I do know that they're looking to add more to the Harry Potter area as well. Um, I did see that they are looking to maybe possibly put in the Great Hall, so then that would be turned into like a dining area for, uh, for that land. Which would make sense because that land is themed after the, um, Fantastic Cre- Fantastic Beasts uh, storyline. So that well, it's Ministry sense. of Magic. So I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Right, because um, you, you start off in Paris and somehow you end up in United Kingdom. It's a little bizarre, um, but we we shall we shall see. I'm sure they in their heads it makes sense. Um, but you know it's it, it's going to be interesting oh and how did uh, how do you train your dragon somewhere between movies two and three and like i said before disney should kind of pull the trump card and say well technically uh movie two is within our fox license agreement um hand over our marvel stuff we'll hand over your dragons but that's just my thinking um so yeah um it, it if anything, it brings on competition and it's kind of forcing Disney to not get stagnant and, and do a little more than they have been. Um, and, and even more so faster than they have been. Uh, because what? It took five five years to build Tron and a little bit longer than that to build Guardians. In Guardians, yeah. I, I, I understand kind of the complexity of it why it took so long but even at that why did it take so long um so we we shall see yeah i mean you know um sorry i was disturbed by a nine-year-old uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we'll see in the end. I mean, like I said, I'm still very interested in, in, in definitely seeing it. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I grew up with Mario, so to actually get on the ride and play Mario Kart, I'm actually kind of really excited for that. I know you're not, but I'm really excited for it. Um, uh, you know, the Train of the Dragon, I love Toothless. Well, here's my reasoning say... behind Here's my reason behind Mario Kart. To me, it's it's Ratatouille. 
Okay. Which is a which is a fine ride, but it's not a e ride. Well, yeah, I, I get it. I mean, I I think I think we have to, you know, you have to do it to see. Well, I, I, and it, it can prove me completely wrong and blow my mind away, and I, I can say that it's one of the best rides I've ever been on. But from everything I've seen, it's Ratatouille. And and it surely may be, you know. But like I said, I I I gotta see it. But, you know, I mean, I I've seen it, you know, reenacted people being on it, showing it on YouTube. But you know, watching it that way and actually experiencing it are two different things. So oh, true. You know, so it's like I you know I I have to I have to see it. Like you know, kind of like when everybody went on Guardians and oh I'm so sick and I'm so sick and then all of a sudden we all went on it. We're like we're fine. <laughs> like none of us got sick. Yeah. So, and I don't even see, I don't even see the nausea behind that, behind that ride, to be honest with you. Uh, the, you know, the nausea behind Mission Space, yes, that I yes. get. But the nauseousness from Guardians, I don't even get it. I got more nauseous on I think you got uh, more nauseous Flight of Passage. On, but I was going to say the Flight of Passage than that, yeah. Yes. And I don't usually get nauseous. Um, so that, that's... Uh, yeah, so I mean, we shall see. We'll just see when these things when these things open. Um, but like I said, uh, it it brings out competition. Competition's a a good thing. It's always a good thing because it keeps each each park. Uh, at, I, I want to say at its best. Um, you know, it does. It is good to have that little bit of rival rival rivalry type mm-hmm. thing going on. Um, you know, so. And maybe it'll be a good thing. Get everybody to go to Universal, clear out Disney for a little bit for them to kind of get the message that they got to keep it up and to keep, you know, to keep relevant a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't think people are ever going to stop going to Disney. I really don't. I don't think that's oh, ever no. going to happen. I mean, I know I'm not. I, I would I would go anyway, but it's because there is just that certain type of magic there that, you know, that you, you I, I know you can't get at Universal. I know that. Um, I don't care what they have in that park. I mean, you, you, you can, you could fill it up. You could, you could put the Goonies there and I still would be like, uh, no, (laughs) no, but they Um, have the new movie coming up. So, you know, I, I, it's just like Disney will always be it for me that it, that it just, that, that will, you know, that will always be it for me, but I, I am interested to see this new era of rides and, and experience the things that I haven't got to see because I, like I said I've never been to Islands of Adventure so I am kind of really uh looking forward to to doing this and just kind of seeing you know and and actually having a real good you know comparison from one to the other um but you know it'll be interesting to uh to see it and everything like that and to see is it worth to go back you know did I like it that much that it's is it a return trip or is it okay we did it once we'll wait another 25 years <laughs> You know, so yeah. we'll see. We'll we'll see. I mean, obviously, um, uh, you know, we're we're not looking forward to doing this till maybe next summer. But obviously, uh, I'm sure I'm sure you're going to want to uh, talk about our planned trip as we get closer. Of how you know, I'll probably do some planning podcasts of what we're thinking and what we're planning and where we're staying and and all that kind of stuff, so that uh, we kind of keep everybody up to date what we're trying to do. Um, but you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, but I, I, I am very interested uh, as, you know, to hear, you know, what the opening day is going to be like and, and, and everything like that. So, um, but as far as, you know, as direct competition, Disney needs to come up with something fast. <laughs> they will, they will. And, and again, they're, they're allowing universal to have their moment. Um, and then they, they will. And they will release some stuff as well. Um, any any other uh, fi- final thoughts? No, I'm good. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, much appreciated. Much appreciate your insight and conversation. And we will be talking again soon. Bye, everyone. What are your thoughts of Universal's Epic Universal? Let us know. Again, join the conversation. Like I said, find us just about everywhere on social media at WD Magic Cast. 
Um, I want to thank you for your time. I know how little time we all have around here. Uh, it's the fact that we get to spend some time together truly means a lot to me, to us over here at the WD MagicCast family. Thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart that and that comes from all of us over here. Please go to Apple Podcasts, uh, go to Spotify, leave a rating review. We have all five-star reviews at the moment. Keep them coming. We need more. Um, the more, the merrier. Um, the more reviews we get, the more that they will help tell other people about the show. Uh, this way helps grow the WD MagicCast family. Um, or while you're at, also tell tell people you know about the show. Share out a link on your social network to your latest episode or your favorite episode, and let people know. Or tell them in person. Communication to t- uh, talking to people is not dead. It's still a good form of communication. Um, and let them know about the show because again, the more people, the better. Uh, Walt believed in Big Disney Family, and so do I. Don't forget to subscribe to the show while you're at it. This way you always know when a new episode is posted. Um, while you're at it, also consider becoming a premium subscriber. Truly help the show out. Uh, you could do this over at Spotify Podcast. The link is in the show notes for that. Plus, also our socials are in the show notes. Um, and our merchandise shop, like I mentioned before. Check that out, too. Because remember, this show is brought to you by listeners like you. In Japan, broken objects are often repaired with gold. The flaw is seen as a unique piece of the object's history, which adds to this beauty. Consider this the next time you feel broken. Never give up. Never give in. Be your own hero. Let your light shine for the world to see how wonderful, beautiful, and special you truly are. Now, I'd like to end this week's show with a quote by Walt Disney himself. All the adversaries I've had in my life, all my troubles and obstacles have strengthened strengthened me. Jen, that's from Walt Disney. Thank you again for listening, everyone. And I'll see you next time.